Hello, welcome. Today we're going to be talking about SSM agent troubleshooting and how to troubleshoot those agent deployments. We've talked about how to build out the back end and get the SSM installed and ready to go. And so now we need to get the agents out there so that we can start deploying software updates and software to your endpoint devices. So today I wanted to kind of go over how to troubleshoot agent related issues uh, with SCCM. Now the SCCM agent troubleshooting, I wanted to talk about the requirements, uh, deployment methods and the log files that you can look for to kind of find out what's going on with the um, agent and why it's not getting installed on those systems that are failing um, and some troubleshooting tips. So with that, let's get started. So we're going to, now I want to talk about the requirements. As you can see here for the uh, client deployment requirements, um, you need to have Windows Server 2000 R2 site for or other site servers. Uh, there's a link, there's a patch you need to apply for if, they're, if they are a site server. And if you um, need to have a Windows version, Windows installer version 3.1 or greater, which is on Windows XP 3, Service Pack 3 or higher. So if you have any newer version of the operating system, you should be fine there. And you need to have background intelligence transfer service enabled. Um, sometimes you'll find that these that service is turned off and therefore that's one reason why the agent's not getting deployed is that service is turned off. So you want to make sure that's turned on. Uh, if you wanted to make sure they're always turned on all these uh, machines, you can create a group policy to always turn on that service if you wanted to. Um, hardware, uh, you need at least 384 megabytes of RAM, which is very low, but that's all it requires for the SSM agent. Uh, 500 megabytes of free space, so basically, and then plus five gigabytes of cache files. So SSM will check the, the drive space and see how much is free on there. If it has less than five gigs free, it will not install the agent. It will give you an error in the log and then you'll have to go ahead and fix this, this space issue and redeploy the agent. Um, so here's some of the methods that you can actually deploy the agents. You can use the push method, which will establish an account with the installation rights on clients. Would, would you, um, wouldn't, would you like to have the client automatically install on everything found by SCCM? So the preferred method is using the push method, which is why it's at the top. Uh, you can also use a software update point to do this if you wanted to. The SCCM client must be published in the software update point. No client installation properties can be configured, so I'll show you that when we do a little demo of this. And then also you can use a manual or login script. So manual will also be uh, maybe uh, an instance where you have to manually install because the push method didn't work because some ports are closed um, or there's some other issue going on and it's preventing the push method from actually pushing the client to that machine. And or login script, you have to browse to the site server, site code, and then the client, and then you can run the CCM setup. So if you wanted to do it that way, um, you can also make this part of a login script. So when people log in, it does the little thing. Not a very um, good method to use because it runs that every time the person logs in, so you don't want to use that. But that option is there if needed um, to, to initially get things out there, and then I would just take it out of the login script. And then, of course, group policy. And again, there's no installation properties that can be configured at this level. So if you have a, the push method doesn't work and those other methods don't work, you may have to resort to a group policy to initially get things out there. And then from there, um, as you get imaging into your environment, the image should take care of putting the agent on the new machines that come in the door. It doesn't uh, help with the existing machines that are already in the environment. So with that, let's get started. So today we're going to be focusing on the push method um, because that gives us the better uh, flexibility and uh, visibility into getting the agents on there. So with that being said, we're going to go into the uh, system console and we log in here. And as you can see, I got the console open and I've got um, access and compliance and I've got the devices. Now, one of the things I wanted to show you um, in terms of the client push installation properties. Uh, so what you'll need to go do, I'm gonna go in here. Now we're gonna go to hierarchy settings and I wanted to show you this. Um, I know I've showed you this when we've done the upgrade. So whenever you do an upgrade of the environment, when you're moving from one version up to another version, um, you'll have this client upgrade path, which will say either upgrade all my clients within a certain given number of days, like seven days or 14 days, or however big your environment is. I would set to two. Now you can also support the upgrade on servers, so that way you don't, you know, you know, 
automatically upgrade all your servers um, because of, you, you, you know you want to maybe control that a little bit or maybe you do want to upgrade all the servers but you can also not configure the domain controls so maybe those can be done manually um, so I'll show you that so this is just like upgrading your environment now when you come over to client installation properties over here here's the client push installation properties so here's all the stuff now here you can say always install the client on domain controls well I have that checked you can actually change it to never so that way if it identifies it being a domain controller it would not install the agent on your domain controllers no matter what you do so those would have to be manually done so just keep that in mind um, you can also allow fall pack if you want to you can able enable an automatic wide site wide push if you wanted to do that I recommend not because you've got that client upgrade thing sort of happening, so it's sort of helping you there. And this is like everything. This is the whole bottle of wax. So I would make, recommend turning this on, but maybe like if you wanted the first week, maybe to kind of get things out there, you can put, you know, enable this. But generally, most people don't have that enabled. Then you want to have an account that has administrative rights on all your boxes, all your desktops and servers, or whatever devices you're going to be managing with SCCM. You want to make sure you have a service account, primarily that's going to be, uh, that, that has rights on those box to be able to install the agent. Otherwise, it doesn't have the ability to install the agent because there are other things that get installed on top of the agent. And I'll talk about that in just a second. And then here's your installation properties. You can have SMS site code equals UN. You can have a management point in there. You can have, this is just a default, by the way. It's just a standard, you know, the site code. And then, of course, you can have some other parameters in there if you need to, like if you want to put an MP in there or whatever. I don't recommend hard coding your management point. Uh, just because the uh, schema should allow the devices to find the management point, so you shouldn't have to define the management point here because that schema is already in place for that purpose. So those are basically, you know, once you've done this, now you're ready to deploy the agents. Now, as you can see, I've got the, I recently did an upgrade to the 1906. So everything got upgraded except for one machine. So, um, so here, when I want to monitor the deployment, I can come into monitoring. I come into production client deployment under client status. You can see that in the deployment now here, you can choose like your different collections. If you want to see like all servers, if you want to see all desktops, or if you want to, if you want to create a specific collection that you want to monitor, you can just browse to that collection and it will show you the status of that production client deployment. It also tells you the last time it was updated, like today's date and what time. And it gives you all of the different errors. Like I've got four compliant, I got none in progress, and I've got one that's non-compliant, which is that one machine. So we're gonna have to go take a look at that. And you got number failed and you got unknown. Unknowns usually means that SCTM can't get to that machine. It could be offline, it could be a port issue, it can be a firewall issue. Um, it could be a number of those things when it says it's offline. If it's failed, it means it failed because it was not didn't have enough drive space. Um, IIS failed to install. A bit was not enabled, and so it failed the installation. Sometimes you'll get an access five, which is um, code five, which means it didn't have rights in that box, which, which is why I was talking to you about that service account. So sometimes the um, the system doesn't have rights on the back, so it'll fail. Uh, so there's an a handful of reasons why something would fail and then you have to go click you can click on the link right here and it'll actually take you to the list of machines that fail the same thing here so if I want to click on that non-compliant one I can either click on it over here or I can click on the non-compliant over here so I'm going to click on that and it'll take me to a list of machines that are non-compliant and it's the current client version right now and what have you so uh, and sometimes you'll see like some compliance that it'll just say non-compliant or sometimes tell you an error sometimes not so it just depends on what's going on with that box so we know we have one device in our environment that's not compliant to the current version which is the 1906 um, so when I come in here let me go to um, when you go to the installation of your um, Let's see. Let me find that first. Okay, if you browse to your site server, your primary site server, SMS your site code, you'll see something called client. And this is the latest client version. So you can actually, like I was talking about earlier, you can manually uh, install that client. So this is how you would do it. You'd run that CCM setup right here. Now, inside all of this, it'll also install your SAP if you have that enabled. 
you'll also install um, some other components like um, the the MS the XML file and install the V uh, C++ V Direct here. It'll also install Silverlight. It will install some other components within just the agent. So like the Silverlight's required for the catalog, the application catalog. Um, it installs the IIS components and installs the XML and some of the other components needed for VSS SCCM. So there's some other things that gets installed along with the push method. So that's why the push method is more popular because of all of the other components that gets installed. Plus you have that installation properties that you can have there so you can tell the clients where to go, to, you know, up the site code is the part the one thing you want to you need to have in there is the site code so with that i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to go ahead and right click on this machine now you can do this on a collection or a machine so here i'm just going to give the machine i go install client and then i'm going to go ahead and go next and so i want to um uninstall the previous version and install the new version because it already had an existing version installed and so i'm trying to push this client out so i'm going to go ahead and do this and you select the site code and you go next, finish. So now what I want to do is I want to monitor that. I'm going to go to CA, okay, root, see all the time. Now on the client side, you want to go to the Windows folder, CCM setup, logs, CCM setup log. So this will tell you exactly what's going on and it'll kind of browse you know what you want to do is it'll take some time to see how it checks for bits. It checks for adding certain files and then you know, it just kind of goes through its process. Now at the end, you'll get like a extra code, like an extra code zero or extra code seven or whatever. It'll give you an extra code. So I'm gonna let this run through just a little bit and I'll be right back. And as you can see, it's starting to do the other stuff. It goes through and checks WMI, it checks some other things. It goes through its paces. As you can see, it continues to go now eventually. It will uninstall the previous version. It will install the current version. Just doing this. Now, again, you can create a collection of machines that you need to do this to. Right-click and do that step there um, to push out. While I'm waiting for the log file to finish up on that machine, you can actually look on the log on the primary site server. So you would go to the primary site server, and you would go to the installation folder of Microsoft, and then you go to logs. And inside that folder, you'll see something called CCM log. So on the primary search server, it also tracks the installation. It'll, it'll tell you like the request, um, the request number associated with that, the name of the server, and it just kind of goes through its paces. So, so you can look at the logs here. The only thing that this gives you that the client log file doesn't give you is this this name, this little number right here that references that little tag for that deployment for that machine. Um, and see, it says zero, so that means it did succeed installing that. So I just that's the client log, and I'll show you something in just a second with that. So now I'm back on the client machine, and as you can see, it's still doing its thing, its paces. And we'll go down to the bottom of the uh, log. But it's still doing its paces, so it's not quite done yet. Now, and that on the primary site server, this file right here, it's 222. Now, if I come in here, primary file, manager, um, inboxes, CCM retry, CCA, CCR retry, CC retry folder. Eventually, if it fails, anything that fails will automatically dump that little file into this retry folder. So it will continue to retry the installation until it succeeds. And it can do that, I think, up to 100 times. And you can change that number if you want to. But if anything fails, it will automatically be dumped in a retry state. And it'll, files will be listed here in that retry folder. So, um, so that's the nice thing about the CCM is that you, but you have to catch it because I don't think this rolls over. Um, but that's why I rely on the client log to give me. Now, this is saying exit code seven. Now, the exit code seven is saying that this machine requires a restart. So something's triggering that restart. So we're going to go ahead and restart that machine. So keep that in mind. There might be some restart requirement. Now, technically. The SSM agent does not require a restart, but in this case, there's some pending restart that was on this machine already, and so it triggered that restart. So we're going to go ahead and restart that machine. So let me go over to that machine, and we're going to restart this box. I'm going to bring it over here. 
I'm going to go ahead and restart. Now, sometimes this does it, sometimes not. So let's uh, go ahead and restart. It's not a big deal. It's just a lab server. I'll go ahead and restart. And I'll be, um, be back shortly. Okay, so now the system has restarted. And so now there you go. You can see the latest version is now installed. Um, it's got the 1906 version of SHM. You can see that it's going, it's bound the site code, which is what I told it in the installation, site code equals you, so that's the site code. And you can see that all of the components are installed because you see the action is full. If you see action with only two things, that means something happened with the installation and you may have to manually reinstall it. But if this all looks good right here, this is all good. All the components look good and installed and all of this looks good. So. Um, so this was a successful, I had to redeploy this machine, for whatever reason I had to re redeploy. So now when I come back into the console, so even though that's the last success code was seven, but I already know I restarted it. So if I come in here and do like a little restart, now it may take up to, now it's showing this, which is fine. It's going to do that. It, it will take up to like 10 more minutes-ish to reestablish this, and this will turn green eventually. As you can see, it's got the new version. So over the next 10 minutes or so, this will turn green um, because it will have a chance to do the hardware inventory and all that good stuff, and, and the big green button will go through its paces, and, and eventually this will be... Um, It'll look green in a moment here. And that's basically it. And so when you're doing these troubleshooting, some of the things that I find in terms of tips is to maybe create a, a collection of these machines. This is a very um, helpful area to go to um, to find out. Now, if you want to find out why something failed, now since you're using the push method, you can actually run a report. So you can go to reporting, reports, and go to clients, a client push. And if you go to client push details and you right click on that and run this report, it'll tell you why. Uh, and if you click on like everything, I just want to do everything, just do all and do view report. And that'll give you all of the status, whether it's not compliant, it failed, and it'll actually tell you why it fails like this one. See, it said zero, one reach, one device. It gives you the, and then it tells you the status, like complete or if it failed or, un, and it'll actually give you the reason why. So when you export this report, it'll actually tell you that it was out of space or there were some other issues. So this gives you, this report will give you a good idea of why some of these failed on some of these devices. And as I said, I, as I mentioned in the beginning, a lot of the reasons something fails is because of firewall issues or bits was not enabled or load just disk space on that machine. And so those are primarily the common ones. Um, I'm going to be, I'm going to put a list of all of the error codes on my website. So go check out that website for the list of error codes and what to do and what those mean. So I'll be putting that there. So look for that. And that's basically it. So if you have any questions um, regarding getting the agents out to your environment, let me know in the comment section. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. There's going to be more content coming your way, so subscribe to this channel. And again, um, I'll put the link to my website below in the comment section. Again, thanks for watching. Have a good day. Bye-bye.